Hey, what's going on, y'all? This is Reggie Winston with the Better Barber Podcast. Here on this podcast, we believe that together we can make barbers better. And hey, look, this is a special episode. I got some guests with us. It ain't one guest. We got company today. And uh, our partner, man, amazing aunt, he couldn't be with us on this episode. He's out handling business. But hey, look, man, we got some really dope people at the table and we got some people in the background. Hey, go ahead and shout yourself out. Go on, give us a good wave back there, Mr. Tony. Hey. All right, cool. At the table right now, man, we got two amazing barbers, man. Um, I'm going to let them introduce themselves, man. We're going to start um, over at Mr. Um, um, Mr. Russ, Razor Sharp Russ. Russ, what's going on, my brother? How you doing, bro? Talk to the folks, man. Tell them about yourself, man. Well, my name is Russell Shaw. I'm a licensed barber. I've been barbering for 26 years now in the state of North Carolina. Nice. I'm also an educator yes, sir. in the state. So it's just my privilege to be here. I'm a co-owner of Another Level Hair Bar located in Greenville, North Carolina, 106 East 5th Street. And so also I'm the co-owner or one of the co-founders of the Slay Wars and the Broad Fort All Barber Battle, which will be held on October 17th at the Greenville Convention Center. So it's an awesome event for barbers. I, I would consider it like a job fair for barbers on steroids, something crazy. But it's, it's, it's worth your time. It's worth your effort. I think you should be in the building. That's what's up, man. You got your brother here with you, right? Definitely. He off camera, man. He got, he got to lean in. What up, Rich? Hey, that's my guy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. All right. Awesome, man. We got another amazing person here, man. Let's go to our next guest, man, Mr. Swinney. What's going on, Mr. Swinney? How you doing, sir? How you doing, Mr. Winston? Good to see you again. Hey, man. Likewise, man. Talk to us, Mr. Swinney. Tell them about yourself, man. What's your background, man? Uh, real simple. Uh, my name is Michael T. Swinney. I am the founder of North Carolina Barbers Association, owner and operator of One Stop Barbershop, uh, Rayford and Pembroke, North Carolina, and the owner of One Stop Academy School of Barbering. Association, advocacy, representation, and education. We are here to service you barbers and to make sure that your voice is heard in the state of North Carolina. We're so glad to be here. I'm too excited. Too excited. <laughs> Y'all, let's give it up for the guests, man. Yes, Clap it up. Clap it up. If you're in the car right now, clap it up. Yes, we got some amazing people, man. And uh, let's not discount the people behind you, man. We got my man Chewy over there. Chewy, what's up, Richie, brother? How you doing? Yes, sir. And we got Mr. Wayne over there. What's up, Wayne? Oh, yeah. Awesome, awesome. So, yeah, man, we coming back, man. So, today's episode, man, I, I'm I'm really feeling it because now it's just not me and Ant having a conversation and inviting one uh, perspective to include their perspective we got different levels in here right another level b huh you see that come on man all right cool so we got a barbershop owner educator um been in the industry for a while and put together shows we have mr swinney here man he's been in the industry for some time now but he's really passionate about uh elevating same as you russ but has a nonprofit, which is an association um school and barbershops and we have some students here. We got or well, a student, Mr. Tony. We have a GM of one of the barbershops here, Mr. Wayne. We got a, a guy fresh out of school now, right? A still hey, apprentice. A wow. Oh, hey, clap it up for him. Hey. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, Chewy license. Yes, yeah, sir. yeah. So, yeah, Chewy license. Chewy, how long you been in there, bro? Um, I'm going, what, a little over a year? Nice. Oh, so, wow. a little over a year. Oh, yeah. And we got yeah. Reg. Reg is familiar with the barber industry because his brother, but Reg is not a barber, but he's seen some of the ins, the outs, mm -hmm. the ups, the downs. So we got a lot of different perspectives, man, here. Um, let's let's dig in right quick. Mr. Sweeney, it's, it's a pleasure to have you, man. And it's not often that we get a barber board member or a person with association here. Um, let's go in, man. We got plenty of questions. I'm going to ask you some questions. And... Um, you don't have to elaborate too long. Sure. But give us some good, good some good, uh, what, what's what I'm looking for, man? Give us some good, <laughs> yeah, you know? Yes, sir. No so, so, Mr. Swinney, man, yes, um, why did you become a board member? Uh, first off, Mr. Winston, thank you for having us. Absolutely. I really appreciate your time today and what you're doing with this podcast is mind-blowing. The sky's the limit for it. Thank you. Um, I became a board member. Uh, I started off really just going to the meetings and sitting 
in the congregation as far as to see what was going on. And I did that because I was a uh, barber instructor at one of the local uh, community colleges. Mm-hmm. So after I uh, saw uh, what was going on at the meetings, I'm like, you know what? I was pulled to the side uh, a couple times just by some of the senior barbers in the industry. Like, you know, we don't even have a barber association that really represents the demographic of barbering in North Carolina or the state, really. Uh, it's always like maybe um, you got this set of barbers over here, this set of barbers over here. But the barbering industry is so multicultural and so multi-diverse. They needed someone to represent everyone as a whole. So I sat down, I thought about it, prayed about it. I said, you know what? It'd be cool to start a barber's association. It's been a few in the past, but you know, it just really didn't hit the level of being able to service everyone in the state. So we decided to set up as a 501c3, make sure that everything comes in, goes back out to the students and towards continuing education and training of the barbers, barbering instructors, school educators and owners, and shop owners to be in the state. We provide that avenue. We have resources to pretty much everything you could think of as far as it relates to the barbering industry in North Carolina and abroad. So, you know, we just make sure advocacy, representation, and education. We also set it up to where we have petitioning power to go down to the legislative in uh, Raleigh, North Carolina. So if there's something that goes on that we don't like as a community of barbers, so many X amount of members with our association can stop it. So that's why the membership with us is free. We just need you to join. We want mm-hmm. the force. Absolutely. Yes, sir. And are, are y'all doing surveys on this uh, website? Absolutely. Through the social- uh, we actually have a survey, uh, Mr. Holloway, shout out to Sherrod <laughs> Holloway. We actually have an ad hoc committee formed on behalf of the board now mm-hmm. to do some surveying with some of the testing and some of the uh, absolutely policies and procedures that just may need a little bit updated. Yeah, absolutely. You know, because of the area of barbers we're in now. Mm-hmm. So, yes, sir. We do have a survey getting ready to come out now. Survey Monkey all day. Talk to me, man. What's um, been some of your struggles with um, getting participation in the association? Uh, this is going to sound strange, but because uh, I thrive to be some of everywhere, I haven't had a problem getting people wanting to be a part of the association because they have wanted to be a part of an association for so long. The first question I get is like, hey, I didn't even know we had an association. Man, can I be a part of it? And then when I say it's free to join, uh, Mm -hmm. they really, uh, really, really get excited. So to answer that, the problem that I have had with getting people to join, that I need three more of me. (laughs) If I had three more of me that could be here, be there, be everywhere, now we have an association team. Mm -hmm. So we're able to kind of spread out people going and coming to your events, coming to uh, Mr. Russ's events, uh, being down in South Carolina some. You know, we make sure we're kind of everywhere. So we can let people know we're here. Awesome. Yes, so, sir. what what are you looking for when you say three more of me? What when what I say qualities? Three more of me. Uh, what qualities must this person have? Uh, well, to say that the qualities would be uh, just a focused group focused on recruiting members for the association. Okay. So uh, bubbly, you know, it's hard to be Mr. Swinney. I'm, you know. <laughs> it's only <laughs> but, one. <laughs> oh man, listen. But you know, just people that uh, see a need to, you know, recruit. And let barbers know, hey, this is what you want to be a part of. Remember, all the major uh, entities in the world have associations. Mm -hmm. Medical Association, Mm -hmm. General Contractors Association, Mm -hmm. Realtor Association. Barbering is a $25 billion business by, what, 2025. Oh, listen, we have an association too. That's it. People need to know about it. And they want to be a part of what's going on. So I'm, Mm -hmm. I'm excited that people are excited. Yes, sir. I, I, and I asked that, man, because uh, oh, years ago, man, I tried to reach out to a local barbershop on this right here in, sure. in my backyard. Sure. And I'm like, yo, how can we work together? Let's meet yes. every, you know, once a month or whatever. And it started off 20 barbers. Sure. Then next month it was 15. Mm-hmm. Then the next month it was 10. Yes. Then the next month it was the eight. Yes. Then it was four. Then it was just me and my two guys. Yeah. And it was like, man. I need y'all to be a part of this building because I want you at the table to come up. What are we standing for? What sure. are we trying to achieve? Sure. I don't want to come in with a full vision and you just have to be a part of it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that was a challenge, man, to figure out what people wanted and how mm-hmm. can we work together. And then barbering, man, a lot of barbers are behind the chair all day and all day. they don't want to spend their all day their uh, time off of work. Yes, sir. Brainstorming. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. 
and I had a, a you know a, 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 a accept that, but I'm glad that you have established something that you're working in. Um, I signed up. Russ, talk to me, man. What's going on with you? Tell me about associations and you, man. Have you ever been in a part of an association? What do you want to see from an association? I haven't actually been a part of an association. Wow. But I'd like to because it shows the sense of togetherness. Absolutely. Because where where there's unity, there's strength. You hear you hear the stories about you know, uh, the you know the hand wide open, mm -hmm. and you close mm -hmm. it, you can strike a mighty blow type thing. It, it's it's awesome just to see the togetherness, the unity, the strength in the unity. Like even just with, I guess events like this, I, I consider. Well, I, I can tell you this, this story I heard about a man that had a fast donkey on the farm, and he went to the Kentucky Derby with his donkey, <laughs> and so he he's there with his donkeys, and there's thoroughbreds everywhere, and you got the guys riding or the jockeys. You got the trainers, you got everybody. But the thing about it was, they're trying to tell this man, did you expect to win the race? Do you, do you really expect to line up with thoroughbreds in this competition? And, and the man that had the donkey said, man, I'm, I'm just glad to be in the company of greatness. Mm -hmm. And that's how I feel sometimes. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm around the company of greatness mm -hmm. right now. Just for me to be around like-minded individuals it does something for you mm -hmm. mentally, physically, spiritually. It puts you in a mindset to say, I'm around greatness so I can be great. I can do something great. I really want to aspire to be something great. Mm -hmm. You can't just say I've been in the game for this long and I'm good where I'm at. Mm -hmm. I'm always striving for greater. Mm -hmm. There's a level that I can reach. There's another level, mm -hmm. another level, <laughs> but I can really, really reach. I can really strive. I can really, really aspire to be great. Because the 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 ceiling isn't, you know what I'm saying? The right. sky is not the limit. Right. And and I'm not putting a, a limit or a cap on my success. Mm -hmm. I'm not putting a limit. That's why I feel like associations are, are necessary. Because you can see somebody else doing something. You look at other companies. I can look at your business and say, what can I glean from this? I can look at this podcast and, and look at the excellence of it. Mm -hmm. And say, what can I get from this? Even if I do it on my level. I can get something from this. And that's what like-mindedness brings. That's what being together with great individuals brings. It brings your minds together. It brings your hearts together. It causes people to get together and say, look, I can do something great as well. Mm -hmm. Man, it just, man, he just, come on, man. You preach it, man. Reggie, oh, did you hear what he just said? <laughs> So basically, you, you just described LeBron when he was with the Cavaliers, then went to the Olympic team. <laughs> That's what he just explained, right? Pretty much. Yeah. He was a fast donkey yeah. on the Cavaliers team. That's yeah. right. But when he went to the Olympics with Kobe, wow. Melo, yeah, D Wade, good. Chris Bosh. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. That's good. Ooh, but then he still that feeling back Ooh. to Cleveland. Mm. Hey, but what he do though? When he went back to Cleveland, he went to win something. Yes, sir. Mm. <laughs> Man, oh, because of what he got, he trained with them ready. thoroughbreds. I'm yeah. telling you, oh, yes, Reg, you heard that right, Reggie? Yeah. All right, so I thought you said that's good, that's good, that's good, so, Mr. Sweetie. Man, talk to me, man. You gave me the why on the association, sure. Why be on the barber board though, man? Oh man, them Listen. old folks, man, you know, they've been keeping things like this for since 60. You know, what I'm saying? you would say, right? The paperwork say that too. Come on, now. Like, <laughs> so why, why, why would you be interested in it? Cause you know what, what's going to happen, and what has happened is now you're a part of the problem. Sure, that's the outside looking in, right? Yes, sir. You're now helping and becoming one of them. That's right. And pushing their agenda. Tell us why are you on the barber board, man? When I tell you, I love this question right here. Ah, <laughs> uh, just just in essence of what you said, I'm on the barber board. One, people, you got to see the passion in me. That's why I'm here today. That's why I make it a, a point to go around and fellowship. Association, we are associates. We are like brethren, kingdom-minded business. We just can't do things in the type of way. I know in order for me to have made a major impact, to make a major impact, I had to get on the board, even with the association. The association was birthed by me being on the board. Mm -hmm. So that came, I said, well, you know what? We're going to take this thing and we're going to run with it. I said, now me being on the board, because things have been so long the same way, now I embrace being a part of the problem because I'm going to be a part of the problem that's helping to change. Mm -hmm. 
So now mm -hmm. we're able to make the rules and regular. When you see, like, we, we have the power now, and I'm not going to say power, we have the, the capability of changing the concerns that barbers have had in the state of North Carolina for the past 30 years. That's where me being the founder of the association, I can bring the concerns that I hear going out in the community. All the mm -hmm. association is a community-based business. Mm -hmm. I'm out here doing missionary work. I'm in the streets. <laughs> I'm reaching out to people. I'm saying, hey, man, how do you feel about this? What's going on at your school? Hey, how are you doing with your shop? How are you getting it open? You know, it's when I had a hard time with this the registered test. Don't even worry about it. Had a hard time with the apprenticeship test. The association will start a tutorial program on Sundays prior to each test to make sure you get uh, the, the potential to keep studying after you graduate. Hey, Mr. Swinney, man, we, you know, we got COVID. Uh, uh, what are we going to do? We're going to be out of school. The Barber Association put forth the proposal to do the 576 distance education hours. So while we was out for COVID, the barbers were able to get hours through the state of North Carolina. Mm -hmm. We was able to bring that before the board because of the association mm -hmm. and because I was allowed to be on the board. So it's not about me. It's about what you guys need from me. I'm just a voice. I'm a mediator. I'm a mediator between the state board and the barbers of North Carolina mm -hmm. and the schools and the shops of North Carolina. The Barber Association right there in the middle. So I'm, I want to hear all your concerns. And we taking them, when I tell you, we taking them and running with them down to the state capitol building, running them to the Barber Association, running to the state board meetings. Hey, you, you know, the barber's feeling some type of way about this here. And I can understand because at our school, our students are having the same problem. Over here at Brother Russ's shop, his barbers are having the same problem. How can we fix it? We fix it. You know, wrong wasn't building today, but mm -hmm. it's getting built real strong now, back again mm -hmm. now. I love it. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. And you know, Brother Sharad, man, you know, oh, he, he got man. a lot of wisdom, man. He oh, said, seasoning. He said something, man, that I, I use, man, like it's my own. But if you're not sitting at the table, oh, man. you're on the menu. Oh, come on now. That's heavy. Come yeah. on now. If you're not seated at the, seated at the table, that's you right. are on the menu. That's right. So why not sit at the table? Yeah. All right. All right. And, I, and I, we, we talked about the barber board a little bit. I yeah. have Brother Tony back here. I'm going to share my mic with you, Tony. Yes, sir. All right. Don't don't bite it now. Don't <laughs> <laughs> you Tony the Tiger. Ooh, Arr, but Tony, man, well, come on, pull your chair up, man. We're gonna get you in camera too, man. Yes, sir. Tony, talk about some um you're from Atlanta, background in uh graphic design, but you always been passionate about hair. You got some great hair, by the way, Tony. Oh no, my yeah. it's laying right. You're right. Tony, you're a current Barber student at Wake Tech Barber Program. Shout out Mr. Graham and Shout those amazing Graham. people. Eagles What's only up, fly Mr. with Graham. Eagles. Come on now. See you, Mr. Graham. Come on now. <laughs> Tony, I'm going I'm to I'm pass you the mic, man. Um, we have a board member here. Yes, sir. You're a student. What are you seeing? What are you concerned? And what are you liking? What, what things, you know, we always got to talk about. Humans always talk about or oh, complain. You know, we complain right. a lot. Oh, this ain't right. What? Also, tell us what some things, some things that you've seen that are actually pretty good and was working out for you, all right? Okay. That sound good? Here you go, sir. Involving the board or school and, and just all in general? Mm -hmm. your, your position as a student. All right, well, thanks for having me on, first of all. I really appreciate it, right? Mm -hmm. And Mr. Sweeney, to hey, your sir. point, I've, uh, yes, I've always been a believer that if you're not part of the solution, you're part of the problem. That's right. And sounds like to me one of the things that, that, that you are thinking in a way that hasn't been by the board. You're much more progressive yes, sir. in thinking. And as you mentioned, $25 billion industry by 2025. Yes, sir. If you want a chunk of that, you cannot be antiquated. Mm. You can't keep doing things the old way. That's right. In my opinion. And you need to be more progressive. Um, I am very fortunate to be at the Wake Tech program. Because Mr. Graham understands passion, he appreciates passion, and he also knows how to see what you're trying to become mm -hmm. and helps guide you there. Sure. Um, I have my own concerns about where I can go mm -hmm. because of a variety of issues. One, my passion of, of learning to cut hair. I believe barbers cut hair better than anybody else out there. And that's long hair, that short hair, learning the art of cutting hair is the most important factor. Mr. Graham understands that. My primary issue with the board and the way it's run right now is if you go to cosmetology school mm -hmm. and you graduate, 
get your license, you can go work in a barbershop. Mm-hmm. Sure can. But I can't go work in a salon. Now, I appreciate the need to work under a registered barber. Yes, sir. And if that salon happens to have a registered barber, mm-hmm. which that does exist, but it eliminates a huge chunk of that $25 billion industry that North Carolina could be taking a part of. I think this industry, I think the art of barbering would grow exponentially Mm -hmm. if you could get barbers who are passionate about long hair, straight hair, curly Mm -hmm. hair, whatever kind of hair. And it's more accessible. Mm -hmm. When they find out you're a barber, they're blown away. I I cut my wife's hair, I cut my sister-in-law's hair, I've cut co-workers hair, long hair, and they're like, you're a barber? Oh, you only use clippers. No. No, no, no. Clippers are mechanical shears. That's all they are. That's right. Clipper over comb builds form. I don't want to use guards. I'm learning clipper over comb whole way around. I, I mean, I, I, I just want to learn the art of cutting hair, and I'm Absolutely. so fortunate to be under Mr. Graham. He understands. He jokes with me when the board comes up. It's like, oh, don't get Tony started on the board. Don't get him started. Don't get him started. I mean, because I do. I take a – it is very – frustrating for me to have to know that someone joined the board in mm-hmm. the past sure. to change the rule so that a cosmetologist could go work in a barber shop mm-hmm. without having to change their setup because they like the aesthetic of their of their shop mm-hmm. yet barbers aren't allowed to do the same thing and i, pr- I do appreciate the need to work under an apprentice under a master barber i totally get it sure. but even there if i want to go to work at a salon i've got to get my own barbershop license mm-hmm. and then set it up partitioned away mm-hmm. and you have to have a certain setup as a barber granted but you know it's it's just an antiquated way of thinking about it mm-hmm. i think honestly the boards cosmetology board and barber board should merge if you want a more powerful legislative voice Make it bigger. You don't need to eliminate people from one board or the other because there's Mm -hmm. different responsibilities. The sanitation aspect is the most important part of what's running in the, the, you know, focused on by the -hmm. board and the inspectors right now. The actual development of the artists that are barbers, because it is art, Mm -hmm. cosmetologists, hairstylists, it's art. That's a function of the instructor Mm -hmm. to make sure you're ready. And you're talented enough. Even going to take the, the apprentice exam, I kind of feel like the education system in general mm-hmm. is a little antiquated. Some schools cost a lot of money. Some schools don't cost as much money. Right. But you're all learning the same fundamentals. That's right. But when you go to the board, they're like, you know, do your 14-point shave, do your business taper, and you're out, and your theory, and you're out. But really what the board should be standing on is understanding doing those things in a sanitized safe way as far as your skill level that to me should be left up to your instructor um that's the way it was in advertising school sure um but that's just some of the thoughts that i have on it i just think that being progressive about this opening up doors for barbers is the best way to get this state on the on the map when it comes to bringing in, a, you know, having a chunk of that $25 billion, because there is a lot of talented barbers in this state, it is. a lot of them. And um, I'm, I'm, again, I'm fortunate to be in school with some of them and have Mr. Graham, who is just, he appreciates what I'm trying to do, where I'm trying to go, mm-hmm. and my overall vision of it. And to have that respect and appreciation has just has motivated me tremendously. Before we go into Mr. Sweeney, yes. Russ, yes. give me some feedback, man, from what you just heard, man. Talk to me, man. Give, give me some of your feedback from what you just heard. That was a lot to digest. Okay, that's fair. It was great coming from a student yes. just to hear the different things or ways or perspectives to look at it. Because from the professional side, it's like you're in the shop, you're cutting, you're, you're making it, you know, you're making it shake. You're doing what it takes. But coming out of this and looking at the revenue that could be produced all the way across the board, mm-hmm. it, it, it's worth looking into, especially from the board's perspective. Even, even if it's not a merger of 
both like the cosmetology and the barber board, but some type of unity, some type of at least communicating sure. as to where it's a, maybe cohesive, working well together. Because if you can work on one side, if I can get a stylist to come work in the shop, mm -hmm. why can't a barber go work in the salon? Right. It, it's kind of like, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't understand that fully. Mm -hmm. I, I, I get, you know, I get it as far as like the book is concerned sure. or as far as the law is concerned, but working well with others or being safe as far as like sanitation or, or disinfecting, sure. I, I feel like we have it hands down We because we, we've learned how to make sure everything is in a safe working environment. Mm -hmm. And so I don't understand why there's a disconnect on one side and it's more of an inclusion when a guy that could, or, or a lady that's a barber can go to a salon and really do well because there's more salons than there are barber shops. And so you would get job placement and that's what you're looking at. You're looking at job placement versus I'm going to a shop where I might not feel as comfortable, wherein I'm going to a salon where my skill set is diverse enough for me to be able to handle everything across the board. Mm -hmm. And it says, I'm looking at the so many different ways I can really make a difference in the industry. Mm. And if this is a $25 billion industry, oh, that's a major way to cut into that pie. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's, that's an awesome thing for us to look at as barbers being able to work in salons. That's, that's, that would be like really paramount as, mm -hmm. as far as like changing the game. I'm going to go to Mr. Sweeney in a second, but um, one thing that I think about, right, and not from just a Reggie perspective, I'm, I like to see a lot of different perspectives. How do we maintain the integrity and the professionalism and the uh, – the, uh, you treat barbering as a, a really high level. You have a high esteem for it, right? Some people don't, and some people will um, – Take a you give them inch to take a mile. How do we maintain the integrity by being super progressive, right, with the board? How do we maintain? Mm -hmm. And I know you said something about them merging. I know I don't know everything, but I know the state. If they merge them boards, there somebody losing a job, especially yeah, on the board. That, you know what I'm that's, saying? Yeah, that's gonna come up. Yeah, yeah. That's come up. I yeah. know that's gonna There's happen, right? Responsibilities. Oh yeah. And I, but like you know, unity some in some regard is is what needs to happen if right. nothing else you know merging whatever but but becoming one voice in some capacity sure, sure. for at least for legislative purposes absolutely there's different things to focus on um it's just for instance i cut all all kinds of hair long hair short hair curly hair coarse hair whatever straight hair i could go to a salon and not do shaves then i don't need the setup if I choose to not offer that service, mm -hmm. but because I have a barber's license, I can't go into a normal salon and just cut hair. Now, they could have a station set up just for shaves, but that's not my primary station if I'm cutting hair 90% of the time. Now, is it shaves or do you just have to have a water source? A water source. You know, you have to have the sink, you know, and all, all of those things are involved with the shave. They're not involved with normal, you know, just cutting hair. Hand washing. Hand yeah. washing, yes. And, but that's all sanitary. In cosmetology, I don't remember them talking about washing your hands, and mm -hmm. I don't I'm remember demonstrating clients. that even right. at the when I took my test, right? But the barber board, mm -hmm. you have to wash your hands like crazy and it's clean the chairs. When I when took my cosmetology exam, down, I don't. We didn't wipe no chairs down, no sinks down, nothing. We just started on our services. You know what I'm saying? And we used a mannequin then. Barber boy just come with using mannequin. Shout out to my man Josh yeah, over yeah, here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Woo! We're gonna talk about that too, man. Yeah, so, Mr. Name, Sweeney, Josh. talk to yes, what did you hear? What do you yes. what do you want to say, man, to um, a concern that a brother right here had? That is why instructors, as instructors and educators, we absolutely love students. Because the students are gonna give you their honest uh opinion about whatever they may see or hear going on. That's what actually makes uh, students being a part of the association great because they're gonna give us a different dialogue of just being a student than an apprentice or a registered barber. Uh, a lot of great comments 
and points that were made by uh, both gentlemen, uh, Mr. Russell and Mr. Tony. Um, just for clarity, um, a cosmetologist in the state of North Carolina can, as soon as they finish school, go straight into the barbershop. Uh, if she wanted to cut, she doesn't have to get a special permit or license. Uh, in the progressive movement of the barbering industry and actually on our strategic plan uh, for 2022, is that the Barbers Association is working on creating a consistent dialogue with the cosmetology industry. I'm not sure if the cosmetologists have an association, but we're going to be uh, dialoguing with them in efforts to, if they don't have one, to get one established in North Carolina so they can sit down at podcasts and conversations with us. Outside of state board meetings, we really don't ever see cosmetology. But we always hear the concern of barbers and students and registered apprentice about the different entities on the, law, and on the laws in North Carolina. So to give you a little more hope and uh, to give you some great, great, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, excitement about being a barber in North Carolina coming out, you can work in a cosmetology shop now. Uh, and a lot of students don't really know that. Um, it's just a contingency. So if you wanted to work, as soon as you come out of school, in a cosmetology or a salon, you can go. They just have to have a registered in there because you're a student. Mm -hmm. Now, the other contingency with that is that that particular salon, they just have to have that particular area inspected by the State Board of North Carolina as a barbershop. So if they want to have one, chair, uh, one barber in there, just one inspection. But once they get that one inspection, you can put as many barbers in there up under that register as you want. So just, just say you're not a student. Say uh, Mr. Russ and I want to go and work at One Stop Beauty Salon. I can go up in there right now, and if they don't have a particular chair for me, I can call the state board, get them $120, they'll come down and inspect me, and I have a barbershop inside that salon with that one chair. If you want to come in up under me as a student, I can say, hey, I got Mr. Tony coming out of school. He can come in, and he can cut right up under me because the shop has been registered with that area or those two or three seats as a little barbershop. And they have on the wall a state board permit with a little license number and all that good stuff. It's just about letting the state board know that you have barbers in your salon because barbers have abused that. That's why they stopped that. You were getting students coming out of school and barbers just jumping up, going in the salon. And if the cosmetology uh, board doesn't go in there and catch them, they're just working. And then they can just find out they're in the area and go home. They'll never know that student was there or that barber was there. So the state board was like, hey, let's find a happy ground because it is a lot of, you know, potential to be a great profit margin with barbers being in a salon. I used to work in a salon uh, years ago when I started cutting hair. I was in a salon. I was in there working with my barber's license. The cosmetology um, board came in and saw me there. I had my license. Boom. The state board was like, cool, we just want to know you there, too. So this had my little area inspected. The salon paid the 120. You want to come in. You want to come in. He want to come in. They just wanted to make sure they were not regulating, but knowing that the barber was registered in that particular salon cutting hair. So you can cut as much as you want to. You just want to make sure that particular salon has uh, their you know ownership has registered as a uh, barbershop in there. Like this one chair. You see this chair right here? Just registered at a salon or a barbershop. Now, cosmetologists don't make y'all do all that. They, they board don't really care. But state board, that's why, you know, we kind of did that. And once I found that out, I love explaining to students and barbers, like, hey, no, 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 you can work in there. You can go in there and charge those $100 prices, $200 prices, do you some color, mm -hmm. do you a fade, yeah. get you $450,000 on that one haircut, and just be kind of cool with it. It's just that one little contingency that they want you to do. It's not really bad, though. So <clears throat> what I'm hearing is we want to make sure that you have a license. That's it. And we want to make sure that's, that's it. it. That's it, and the public, is, the public is safe. That's it. That's it. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Um. Let's let's do some myth busting, man. Right quick. Cool. Um. Every time I uh, pay money to take a test, uh -oh. the barber board gets paid. Ah, uh, the board doesn't make any money. All Every that. time I get fined at my barber shop, the board takes the money. The board doesn't get that money. That goes straight to the state. Every time the board come in and don't approve me and I have mm -hmm. to redo something or retake my test, y'all yes. making, taking my money. That money goes straight to the state of North Carolina. We're, we are a regulated agency up under North Carolina. That's why we're trying to do our best to stay separate from the cosmetology board. Because the cause is so big, they can just absorb us. 
Mm-hmm. But we're trying to keep our own individual identity. What separates us from cars is that we still use that race. Mm-hmm. We still shave. Now, notice that there are cosmetologists now that are in salons shaving, and there's no penalty. Mm-hmm. You know, they found a gray area. So they're just about trying to get with us, but we're trying to stay separate just because you still won't be able to shave like me after 15, 28, and I train to shave all year long. Mm-hmm. So that's where you get barbers teaching cars, shaving classes. They can learn how to manipulate the razor, but they won't ever learn how to really do it like we do it because we were trained to do it. It's like mm-hmm. us going in the salon and starting to do hair with intensive chemical service and backgrounds. <laughs> we haven't been trained in that. We can take workshops and learn it. Sure. But that's what they went to school and specialized in. We specialize in cutting hair, using clippers, uh, clipper combs, shears, razor. We specialize in using the razor. That's what separates us from that. So to debunk that myth, the State Board of Barber Examiners in North Carolina does not get a dime of your money. We are hired agents. Uh, I'm appointed by Governor Cooper to be on the board, and our job is to regulate and oversee the rules and legislation over the barbering industry in North Carolina. So when the Barbers Association is on the board, you're on the board, Mr. Tony. When the Barber Association is on the board making rules and regulations and helping out with that, you're on the board, Mr. Winston. Uh, when the Barber Board is representing you guys at the legislative or at the state board, you on there, Mr. Russ. So just know that you are all on the board, right? But those are myths. We don't get a dime. Nice. Yeah. Fellas in the background, did y'all learn something today? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because yes, 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 being on our side, we feel like they're taking from us, right? Yeah. Like, look like yo, th- I see what y'all doing. Yeah. Y'all, like, prime example, when you're going through construction. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. Tough. It don't seem like you ever get passed on the first time. No. Mm. Uh, yeah, such and such. Uh, mm-hmm. You got to fix this. Yeah. Do another one. You're like, oh, my gosh. We just took $150 from me. Absolutely. Oh, man. Amazing stuff. Uh, Tony, you just, you just shared some stuff. Mm-hmm. Tony, your perspective is your perspective. It's not right. It's not wrong. Um, uh, old man said opinions are like buttholes. Yeah. Everybody got one. <laughs> Some just full of it. You know what I'm saying? But yours ain't full of. You had a really great. dope perspective, yes, man. Sir. And um, great, great, great. I can see what you're concerned about mm-hmm. and some things you want to change being changed. Sure. Now, will it happen tomorrow? Nah. Mm-hmm. Two years from now, quite possibly. Hope so. You know what I'm saying? Know that we're working um, on it. Another thing that you know, North Carolina and people say this all the time, man. Um, Man, you know what would be a dope idea, Reggie? A mobile barber shop. I was like, bro. Uh-oh. I was like, yeah, I thought about that 20 years ago, bro. Mm-hmm. But it's illegal yeah. in North Carolina. Yeah. I've heard that being worked. That's on the table right now with us, Mr. Winston. Cool. I'm, I'm feeling both ways, right? Because, yeah. as you see, I spent a whole lot of money, right? Mm-hmm. Also, I'm feeling really upset about the studio situation. Mm-hmm. By the laws of the barber board, that's a square footage yep. that cannot be combined with common area. But it seemed like y'all little sneaky jokers, like let's make some more money and just approve this thing, <laughs> and, and, and and make sure that we can get paid by the uh, barbershop permit mm-hmm. and their uh, license. Mm-hmm. If 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 I hired a lawyer and a, a general contractor to design this, sure, you know I spent some money. You spent a lot of money, right? So now a couple years later, barbers can go into studios. Yeah. So why didn't I build a studio? Right. Mm. Because my lawyer went through your regulations, mm-hmm. studied them, got him a lobbyist, talked to my architect. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. This is what we can and cannot do. Mm-hmm. But all of a sudden, barbers. And the situation is, we send barbers going straight out of school, going into studios now. Yeah, shifting. Mm-hmm. No license. Nah, they, so, so yeah, my concern yeah, is, yeah, I was one of the guys that stayed and did the right thing sure. by your, not you, you sure. know, I mean, I'm yeah, oh, absolutely. You didn't write the laws, <laughs> but by the board, or the, by the guidelines that the state put forth, and absolutely. they just ignored them. And started allowing people to go in studios. Am I against studios? No, but I'm against the fact that I did mm-hmm. the right thing and now I feel like Absolutely. I'm getting penalized. Absolutely. Because now I don't know about every barber shop, but a lot of people I talk to, mm-hmm. it's two barbers in an eight chair or ten chair shop now. Mm-hmm. Because nobody wanna work together. Sure. Everybody wants their own. 
their own. Everybody want to feel like they got their own thing and they right. doing it themselves. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, the mobile barbershops, I'm cool for it. I, I've mm-hmm. been thinking it would be a great idea. Mm-hmm. But <laughs> we had a drunk guy pull up his mobile barbershop right in front of my barbershop and not even park in the parking lot. He, he just hops out. Oh, my. And come here and cause a scene. You know what I'm saying? And then I started knowing he wants to park at Starbucks now. He wants to start yeah, park right. at the others. So how do we I pay oh, rent man. here, you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Yeah. So that's the issue. It is. I've mm-hmm. my brother's in uh Charlotte. Somebody pulled that mobile barbershop right up in front of their barbershop. Mm-hmm. Trying to steal those customers. Mm-hmm. You know, that's not a good look. Mm-hmm. Do you ever see a food truck outside of a restaurant? No. Mm-mm. It's some regulation there, right? Absolutely. So I, I think uh, mobile barbershops have to have some regulation on it. Absolutely. Um, and I, I, y'all hear it from me, I think they should pay more and have to get inspected more often mm-hmm. than a mm-hmm. regular barbershop. Mm-hmm. Because yeah. what will stop me from doing a mobile barbershop sure. and get my cousin who ain't got no license from Philly to come just run it? Up. Yeah, just pull up. Right. But I know the board. Is, we're, yes, we're stuck with three. We just got a third inspector now, right? Yes, sir. When I got on the board, when I got into it, it was what six of them. Yes, yeah, sir. <laughs> what? Everywhere. They were. Oh, yeah. oh my god. That was, that was tough. Yeah, Pulled but I know we're going to need some more inspectors. Mm-hmm. I know we need some um, more progressive regulation. Absolutely. Um, and we need some more individuals like us to really formulate and and come mm-hmm. up with these ideas. Yeah. So, gentlemen like yourself. I who t- are I can take it back in that buffer zone, right? Yes, sir. You on this board? Yeah, you, you at that table, and yes, you sir. at this other table. Yes, sir. Um, we we definitely want to be able to bring some stuff to you, Mister Swinney. Yes, sir. Um, man, it's it's a lot. What you think about mobile barbershops, Tony? I'm not against them at all. I think that um, they serve they can serve a very very positive function, mm-hmm. um, especially coming out of COVID. Mm-hmm. Um, people, you know, may not want to go into a pub, you know, place mm-hmm. with, with a lot of people in it and whatnot. But I agree completely. Like pulling up in front of another shop, that's oh, nah. just that's, that's on funny. them. Sure. Not being respectful. Mm-hmm. And you talk about the standards we hold ourselves to as barbers. Sure, sure. That respect is part of it to me. Yes, sir. And respect that this industry. I mean, we can do the cause mm-hmm. debate yeah. all day yeah, long, yeah, yeah, but yeah. who started cutting hair? Right. Barbers. Absolutely. So there's an image problem, too. Right. And that's where I get more progressive. Like, barbers cut hair better than, than hairstylists, in my opinion. That's not across the board. That's a general statement. Sure. You have sure. a lot of great hairstylists out there, but they don't define themselves that way. Correct. They cut hair. Mm-hmm. That's what we do. So the, the issue of getting people to understand that attention to detail, the standards that are maintained for barbering mm-hmm. bring more to customers and clients than right. going and getting your hair cut at Great Clips. Sure. If you go and get your hair cut by a barber at Great Clips, mm-hmm. it's going to be better than a style. I mean, granted, there's, again, that's a general statement. But I just bring, I feel like barbering brings more to this industry sure, than sure. is being taken advantage of. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just, you know, I, and coming from Atlanta, mm-hmm. and my stylist there was urging me for over 11 years to go and do this. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The guy two chairs over from her was a barber. Mm-hmm. He cut long hair, he cut short hair. He charged $80 for short hair, $120 for long hair. He mm-hmm. was booked six months out. He didn't wash hair, he didn't blow dry hair, he didn't style hair, he didn't color hair. Mm. He just cut it. Goodness. Booked six months out at that price point. Sure. She's like, you could be that guy. That's right. That was inspiring to me. Mm-hmm. But I can't be that guy mm-hmm. in the state of North Carolina. Mm. That's what I feel like. Mm. Not because not only school. because it's it's regulations and where you get to work Mm -hmm. it's also perception Mm -hmm. public perception barbers only cut short hair Mm -hmm. and i don't care if i'm only cutting short hair and all that but but that's a perception and Mm -hmm. it's a misconception it is yes sir barbers can cut in the salon barber can cut in the salon you told us how you felt Mm -hmm. yes did you hear the truth i hear that there's 
possibilities okay. to do it. I hear there's ways to do it. Yeah. So he has a way. Yeah. After about two years. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, guess, definitely in two years. Yes, yeah, sir. You can't mm -hmm. walk straight out of school and go straight there. And I, that's, but because they want you to do an apprenticeship. Standard. Yeah. Yeah. That's just an apprenticeship for the year. But as mm -hmm. soon as that year is over, you can go straight to the salon. Mm -hmm. You can go straight to that salon as soon as you get out of school if there's a barber there already. And if there's a barber there at a salon, you're going to want to go with him because he's there for a reason. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. promise you. Yeah, when I worked in the salon, I was making a killing. Uh, mm -hmm. I just, and, and I'm going to touch a little bit on the mobile barbershops. Uh, the mobile barbershops, if you remember the scene, and I'm all for a free enterprise now. I'm an entrepreneur. Uh, I believe if a guy has a great idea, uh, that he should be able to, you know, pursue that within regulations and standards. But I'm going I'm to go back to the movie Barbershop when Nappy Cuts was getting ready to cut across the street. You know this Craig Barbershop, yes, all his clients left, yes, went over to Nappy Cuts, yep. but it was only for a season. Yes, the mobile barbershops, I don't see them ever being able to compete with a brick and mortar to where you could come in and have that family feel. I'm hanging out with my homeboys. I'm seeing my cousins. I'm seeing my coworkers. Everybody's in there talking junk, having a good time. Mobile barbershops cannot compete with that will not ever be able to compete with that. And if people do break off and try to do a mobile barbershop, they can, but know that the State Board of North Carolina has that on the ad hoc committee meeting right now. It shall be regulated. So we have heard you, North Carolina. And with the sweets, check this out. Same thing with nappy cuts. You can't, I have barbers calling me now. Mr. Swinney, man, I, I'm enjoying my sweet man, but I sure do Mr. Barbershop feel. I say, well, we always here for you. Cause you will never be able to get that in a sweet. Is some people that's introverts and extroverts, right? Some people want to work by themselves. Mm -hmm. Then you have a fella like me, I want to be all up in your face, talking to you, talking junk, <laughs> talking about the game, watching the game. Mm -hmm. You may have a couple of barbers that may drift from that, but they will always come back home. That's just what I've seen in the industry. So you can have a suite over here. Let, go ahead and do your sweet thing. Know that we're regulating that. We just have to get enough manpower to have it regulated. You may get away with it for a little while if you're in there dirty, but we're coming to get you. <laughs> know that. So, you know, know that this field here, this is a barbershop field. We couldn't do this in a suite. Right. So, you know, being an entrepreneur like yourself, you know, got 10 or 12 chairs. When you tap into the schools, know that your instructors at the schools are teaching them to come into the barbershop. Mm. Just your first year can't be in a suite. It's got to be with me. So if I have a year turnover every year, that's cool, because I got another set of students coming out a year later. That's cool if you go to a suite after that, because I got another set of students coming out 18 months later. We're always going to have the brick and mortars back. And also, the you know, the suites, you, you do your thing, but you're going to always want to come back. The suites are going to visit the barber shops after they finish cutting their people hair, because mm -hmm. they missed that field. Mm -hmm. That's yes, it. Sir. You're not competing mm -hmm. with me. You can't mm -hmm. compete with me. No, sir, because we, we got that. We, it's just in the shop. Man, you can't get this. Look, look how we in here hanging out. Huh? So that's cool. The mobile barbers know that we have an ad hoc committee established for that right now that is being getting ready to be. If it does slide through lawyers and politicians and lobbyists, it's up to us because we got the final say so to let you do it. But it's going to be regulated. Tough, tough. Wonderful, tough, man. Tough, tough. That's wonderful. I think that mobile, mobile barbershops would be best suited to be attached to a, mo a brick and mortar. And that's you start a so barbershop. crazy you you're said that. You're out there, because you're marketing your barbershop here while you got this thing rolling yes, around so. the streets and you pull up their front door in their neighborhood. And, 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 and know this, and Mr. Tony, that's how Mr. Swinney feels on behalf of the Barber Association, that you might need to be attached to a brick and mortar. The most successful food trucks yes. have brick and mortar. Absolutely. Yes, sir. So Absolutely. The same thing should apply. Absolutely. I mean, you can't limit people from trying to do it, but they will oh, you can be do as it. successful as the one. You put one out there, you're drawing people because people know this place. Right. They see you driving around. Mm -hmm. He sells this place. Right. And yes. you're going Absolutely. to yes. oh, It's just there. the best. That's right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know, mobile barbershops go to the rest homes, go to out in the community, do work and you know, community work like that. If you're attached to one stop, you're attached to the barber shop, you know, well, hey, we, we got the brick and mortar over here. We're going to do this show this weekend at the game. We got these college kids over here. But we're just not going to be standing alone like a freelance shooter. Mm -hmm. We're going to make sure that it's regulated and that you're attached to something. I love it, man. That makes sense it. to me. I love it. Russ, man, talk to me. How you feel about that, man? I mixed the most. <laughs> <laughs> 
but I like both. Sure. I, like you said, extroverts and introverts. Sure. I, I told a guy, I, I felt like he'd be best suited to work in heat and in air. Mm -hmm. Just because if he worked with a machine, all he'd have to do is write a ticket That's and, right. and, and just give it to the person. But he wasn't a people person. And working in this industry, you have to be able to work well with people, at Absolutely. least your client. That's it. Mm -hmm. Not even working well with your coworker. At least work well with your client. Right. Sure. At least communicate when you're not going to be there. Or at least communicate when you're going to be right. late. That's right. At least communicate when you say, I'm going to do this or I'm going to do that. Mm -hmm. Or how would you like... How would you like your haircut? Not, I'm going to give you what I felt like you should. Sure. Because sure, sure, sure. <laughs> I know you, best for yeah, you, bro. Absolutely. Shut up and get his yeah, haircut. Yo, I got yeah. you. Yeah, just sit tight. No, man. Distinguished barber, man. What's going on over there, man? You, you got to chime in, man. We got to get you. Look, come on over here, man. <laughs> yes, sir. Come on over here, man. Yes, sir. You have my seat, man. Come, come on, on, man. There you go. Distinguished in the house. Barber. Hey man, talk to me, man. You, you was over there, you know, you were here. Go and slide up a little bit. You gotta get too close to the mic. Okay, okay. Talk to us, man. How you feeling about the things you hear? Mm -hmm. what's, your, um, what's your input on some of this stuff? What I'm learning now and stuff, um, just been, I'm still a youngster in this field. Um, a lot of times where, where we fail to realize in the barber industry, a lot of bar the, a lot of guys and stuff, it, they they put their perspective in, like um, when it comes to sure building 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 a brand and building a format and stuff. Um, I know when it comes to me personally and stuff, um, I've 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 been to a quite a few different uh, stages when it came to that. I've, I'm now, I'm now to the point that when it comes to branding and stuff, they have, you, you have to find yourself in a place that, um, that you want to do better. So where I've came to, to, um, when it comes to being with a uh, brand, with Mr. Um, Mr. Sweeney and stuff, I've, I'm more, I'm more, I'm, I, I guess it's, I'm more or less to the point that I'm getting to the point that I'm understanding to better yourself in the perspective of branding yourself in a way, um, going about, I, I, I really can't explain it to how I'm going because I've, I've I guess because I have did a one mm -hmm. I have been once I, I okay I'm, I'm, I'm gonna slow down a little bit I've I travel a lot and when I mean travel I've been to shops to shop I've gone here and gone there and I know that's one of the things and stuff that a lot of, um, you know, it said that, you know, that's, that's, that's a bad thing. But um, I had to learn when it came to me, jump from shop to shop, what it is that you want. So when I got up with Mr. Sweeney, Yeah, he he asked me. He, he he questioned me. He's like, "What is it that you want?" And I was like, "Well, I want to be known at the end of the day and stuff that you know that I know as you know when it comes to being a leader." Yes, sir. Mr. Swinney has taught me how to be. A, he he's starting to uh, teach me how to be a leader. So there's some things and stuff that I'm. I'm seeing it in myself where that I was lacking in. And with me lacking in and stuff, it, it was more of, okay, I had to slow myself down. Once I started slowing myself down and stuff, it made things better sure. um, when it comes to my approach of barbering, when it 
comes to my approach to my wife, when it comes to approach to my kids, um, just in general. So once I got that mindset uh, together and stuff, my thing was, what is it that I really wanted? I didn't know that teaching was one of the things that I wanted to do. And what, what ended up happening and Bro, stuff. Bro, I got to stop you because your camera about to cut off. But you, you, you're you explaining to us that you're about to expand from what you've all your experiences. Sure. And you're about to step into a leadership role. Yeah. Where it's going to test everything that you ever learned and thought and seen in yourself. And I'm going to tell you, when this comes to this leadership role, oh, yeah. you're going to question yourself a lot. Yeah. You're going to blame yourself for everything that go wrong. And good leaders, they praise everybody else when things go right. Am I wrong? Oh, man. So make sure that you praise yourself for the rights. Sure. And don't only blame yourself when things go wrong. Because we all got different personalities and we all got our own experiences and visions. But Absolutely. You on the right track, my brother. Yes, sir. You were, you were a good man over there. Yeah. But yeah, we about to um about I have to change this camera out. But as I change the camera out, it's on this gentleman right here, the GM. Yes, sir. Executive blends in the house. <laughs> so Talk to me. What, what did you been? What have you? Not like getting your camera. Which? What have you been hearing in here today? <laughs> a lot of changes in the industry. Yeah. Um, a lot of good things to look forward to. Sure. Wisdom, knowledge. It's nothing but good, good advice. Um, good questions, great questions. Great questions. Um, it's been good times, real good times. Mm -hmm. Real good times, man. Um, thank you for having me. Good to be here. So, been having fun. <laughs> Keep on talking, man. The camera on you now, man. It's on you, Wayne. <laughs> I'm over here trying to get this camera right. Don't be shy. Um, I don't know, man. Been a barber for 15 years. Been working with Swinney two years, almost yeah. two years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, working with me. <clears throat> with Sir? Oh, man. Oh, man. Hey, you boys tough. That's another thing he taught me, too, man. He taught me how to drip. Taught me how to drip real nice now. So it's a team effort. It's a it's been a journey, man. It's been a journey. I've I I came from uh working on post. Yeah. I was on post since I moved down here. I'm from Cincinnati, Ohio. I moved down here in 2011. Um post was my first job until 2019, I'll say the end of 2019. Um worked out another shot for a couple months. Met Sweeney, trying to get my instructor license. That's how I met Mr. Sweeney. Wonderful. And been on board ever since. It's been a learning experience. I learned a lot, man. I'm That's what's truly up, blessed. Mr. Sweeney, man, I'm going to go back to you right quick, yes, man. Sir. How can the people find out more about you, uh -huh. the the programs, yeah, sure. the school, yes, the barbershop, yes. the church? Oh, man. Come on now. Come on. Congratulations. Oh, Oh, well, I'm not Come mastering, on. I'm just preaching. But, 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 but didn't you just sign up for something? It was a master's? Oh, man, yeah, I'm in, I'm in divinity school now, my master's, uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir, congratulations, man. Yes, sir. Yes, hey, how can the people get to know you more and get some information from your association? It's too easy. Uh, you can reach us uh, via social media, uh, Instagram and Facebook, uh, and uh, on the web. We have uh, the North Carolina Barb Association, uh, www.ncbarbay. Dot com. Uh, we're also on Facebook and Instagram. For the barbershop, uh, you have one stop barbershopnc.com. Also on Instagram and Facebook. And we have One Stop Academy. That's our barbering school. Uh, that's One Stop Academy NC.com. Also on Instagram and Facebook. Like us, share us, follow us uh, all on social media platforms. All of our history uh and how we started uh and where we're going with all our businesses and companies uh we don't look at it as people work for us they work with us because we're all striving to be great iron sharpens iron so does the countenance of another man sharpen the countenance of his friend check us out follow us we love to come see you talk with you we're here to serve you i'm only a servant that's it 
I want to consider myself great. Before I leave this earth, I have to service the needs of my fellow man and the people. That's it. Absolutely. And one thing he said, y'all, was my people don't work for me. They work with me, That's right? That's right. Because yes, you ain't the boss. No, sir. I tell people all the, all no, the time, I don't print money. <laughs> I, if I printed money, I wouldn't have a barbershop. That's right. The people that come in and spend the money, that's who the real boss is. That's right. Because when they see our resume, which is our advertising, right? That's it. They didn't decide they want to hire mm -hmm. us. And then we still have to perform when they come in, right? Sure. And we have to do the job duty that they signed us up for. That's right. If we don't make them happy, we don't please them, they fire us. Yeah. Boom, immediately. If they stop coming, how are we going to make money? Right. So I like to tell my team all the time, I'm just a leader. I just want to make sure that when the boss come, we're doing our part and we're looking good. So yeah, Mr. Sweeney, thank you so much. Bless you, sir. Brother Tony, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Russ, appreciate you. Aunt Chewy, distinguished Wayne. Boom. Thank y'all so much, man. We about to wrap up this podcast, yes, man. You, this is the Better Barber Podcast. Where here we believe that together we make barbers better. My name is Reggie Winston. Check me out on IG, Reggie underscore Winston. Oh. Uh, shout out to the team that came through today. Where this is the haircut and chill after party, man. This is the conversation after. It's not even a party, but hey, we had fun though, right? Yes, sir. It's a party. But yeah, man. Uh, look forward to the Barber <laughs> Battle Blueprint coming up August 29th. Tickets are on sale right now go check the event right out we have virtual tickets we have sure. in person and we have hands-on so it's three different tiers of tickets we're doing we're covering three different uh, barber battles fade and beard total look and haircut uh, excuse me design and color mm. we're going to be really teaching you the ins and outs to winning barber battles and i have myself who i've won many barber battles and i judge many but i have some of the best barbers in the world man i got Marcus Harvey going to be involved with us. We got Haven Hobbs. We got Chris Shorts. We got Hood Barber. We got so many dope barbers mm -hmm. and barber judges, uh, battle judges that's going to be a part of this um, entire event. But once again, man, we appreciate y'all. Y'all have a blessed day, man. Uh, remember to love on your barber. If you're a barber, man, love on your people, all right? Mm -hmm. Spread the love. Peace out, y'all.